Victoria's lad niggled out. One and three quarters tees. Well, then knuckle down. Classy survivor, Jupiter Rising, Shabaya crossing, my kind of music. And Hodgepodge is last. Coming around the home turn, Sir Snuggalotti in front and the Blue Blinkers lead Seal with a kiss. Victorious Lad on the outside. Now he's well to the outside is starting to join in. And then Universal C knuckle down, Jupiter rising. And the rest are headed by Classy Survivor. In the straight, Sir Snuggalotti in front. Seal with a kiss is trying hard with Victorious Lad. Eastwald is coming down the outside. Sir Snuggalotti in front. Running on empty though. Victorious Lad has raced to it. Eastwald on the outside. It's Victorious Lad getting to Sir Snuggalot. Victorious Lad hit the front. Jupiter Jupiter Rising flashes late though. Jupiter Rising after Victorious Lad. Victorious Lad just in front and got home from Jupiter Rising. Third in Sir Snuggalot. Fourth in Eastwell. Then Classy Survivor. Then came Universal Scene. Seal with a kiss dropped out. My kind of music picked up late. And then Shabaya Crossing, who was well back in the field. And one of the last ones home was uh, knuckled down towards the tail of the field with Hodgepodge. Victorious Lad. Looks to have just held off Jupiter Rising, which came at it late. It's uh, pretty close. Jupiter Rising has got close, but two's held on. Victorious Lad is first, has beaten seven. Jupiter Rising by nose, with three quarters to snuggle lot and two lengths away, Eastwald. He loomed up but didn't see out the 1,200. And uh, behind them, Classy Survivor ran fairly, wanted to lay in top of the straight seal with a kiss set outside the leader and weakened. Just did too much bullocking work. Shabar Crossing was late, certainly looking for further. That's the story after the running of race number four. It's a stable Quinella to Neville Parnham. Two seven. One and three, two, seven, one and three. Victorious Lad has uh, just won, looking at the uh, print by uh, a probably a, somewhere between a nose and a short half head. Two, seven, one and three. Let's go downstairs. Mark will be having a chat. Yes, thanks, Richard. Uh, Neville's just walked into the yard. Uh, Quinella for the stable there, Neville. You must be pleased with that. Yeah, it was pretty close. I wasn't quite sure on the line, but uh, yeah, watched the replay and I thought, oh, the other fellas just lasted on the inside. And Stevie's lucky day. It's his birthday today, so he's uh, he got the nod. Mm. Um, was it a plan to bring this horse back to uh, to 1,200 metres? I had a look at his speed ratings. I didn't think it uh, was probably so suited over 1,416. Would you concur with that? Oh, he's probably a better horse at the 14, but he hasn't raced for quite a while now and. Uh, um, and as, as you've probably seen in the run, you know, Stephen was up him uh, uh, before the corner and trying to get him to sort of travel and uh, the horse, uh, he did a good job to sort of finish off and, you know, he's a, he's a nice horse, you know, he could have been probably a really good horse but he's had been unsound throughout his life and uh, unfortunately uh, he's a day-to-day -day proposition but he's, uh, he's got one on the board today. What kind of issues has he had? He's had 13 starts for a five-year-old, that's not too many. No, he had a year off or more than a year. Um, he had some knee issues, had surgery on his knee uh, probably 18 months ago. But he's, um, you know, if we just sort of race him sparingly, he, he gets through each time. But he's done a good job today and, um, yeah, a good effort by Stevie to get on him and, and win on him. Just a word on the on the runner-up, Jupiter Rising, one of the more consistent horses going around on a Wednesday. Look, he's, uh, yeah, he's obviously just come out of the three-year-old grade into into these open class of races. And uh, it was a good effort from him. You know, Brad rides him really well and... You couldn't possibly have ridden him any better than that today and only failed by a very small margin. Yeah, and he was from a wide barrier, so a good performance. Well done on the Canella, and uh, we'll say well done to uh, Stephen when he comes through on a happy birthday. Yeah, cheers, thank you. Now we'll find him there, the winning trainer, and uh, not only the first, but also the second home in here at uh, Belmont Park on race number four. Stephen Parnham's just weighing in here. Well, Stephen, congratulations for the win. Did you think you had it on the line, or did you think your, your dad's or the horse had got up and beat you? To be honest, I actually thought um, he got up and beat me. Mine, he just got tired on his run, and he was, uh, he was trying hard, but he, um, he was starting to die on it. Well, you jumped from an inside barrier, the, the other horse jumped from one of the outside gates. Barrier is absolutely imperative in racing, of course. Oh, definitely. It, um, a lot of luck plays um, a fair bit in racing. Uh, but I had a good run from my draw. Um, he probably needed it first up as well. He had a big weight too, so there was a few things um, against him today, but 
Look, I think he's a, he, he's a tough animal and he tried his best and uh, lucky enough he lasted. Your dad says he's had a few issues. This was just his 14th start as a five-year-old. Um, do you think he can go on with it now? Look, if he didn't have the issues, he'd probably be a good Saturday horse, especially over winter time. But, um, I mean, the horse just has to tell us as, he, as he's going through the prep, you know, manage him and uh, at the moment he's OK. And um, if we can keep him that way, he should be able to win a few more. Let's say it's rude to ask a woman her age. I'll ask you your age. Your dad said it's your birthday today. What year is it? Uh, 32, so um, getting older. Well, congratulations and happy birthday. No worries, thank you. Stephen Parnon there, the winning rider of race number four here, the toll handicap over 1,200 metres. He was on Victorious Lad.